Hello. This year, Red Hat made architecture changes to OpenShift Container Platform and released OpenShift version 4. You may have used OpenShift 4 by now, or at least heard of it. In this series of videos to follow, I'll take you a little deeper into OpenShift 4.x architecture to showcase the awesomeness of this platform. OpenShift 4.x allows you to quickly set up a cluster on the infrastructure of your choice. These are different cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, etc., and your own infrastructure such as uh, infrastructure with virtualization like VMware or OpenStack, or you can install even on bare metal. OpenShift also comes with a developer-friendly version. This can be installed on your workstation and it is called code-ready containers. You are seeing the landing page from where we can download and install at cloud.redhat.com slash openshift slash install. Let us see one of the cloud providers. OpenShift can be installed in two different ways. One, with full stack automation, commonly called installer provision infrastructure, or simply IPI. Or you can use pre-existing infrastructure, commonly called user provision infrastructure, or UPI. With IPI, the installer manages the infrastructure as well. That is, it spins up the machines and then installs OpenShift. It also manages the operating system in addition to the OpenShift platform. IPI uses only Red Hat Core OS as the operating system. If you choose UPI, you as an administrator will set up the infrastructure and start the installer to use that infrastructure to set up a cluster. With UPI, you have a choice of using Red Hat Core OS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 as the operating system for the worker nodes. For masters, you'll still use Red Hat Core OS. If you use Red Hat Core OS as the operating system, then the OS and its upgrades are all managed by the OpenShift container platform. For the purpose of the first install, let us use IPI. So I'm going to click on this IPI button. We can download the OpenShift installer from this page. We can also download OpenShift command line tools, CLI, which is OC from this page as well. The pull secret that you see here will be needed to download images from Red Hat's registry. We'll come back and copy this when we start the installer. I already downloaded the installer, so let us try to install now. I can simply install the cluster by running the install command like OpenShift install create cluster and by providing a directory where the installation artifacts will be stored. This installation at directory will store all the cluster con configuration information. As an example, if we were trying to destroy the cluster later, we would need those artifacts. So this directory are pretty important. However, as the documentation in the landing page shows us, we'll customize our deployment a little bit. In order to make some customizations, we'll create an install config, which is an installation configuration that can be edited to change a few things. So I'll run OpenShift install create install config instead. I'm using a directory with name first where all the install artifacts will be stored. So ask me a few questions. I'll choose an SSH public key to use. AWS is, a, is the platform on which we are going to install. And I'm choosing a region and a domain name for my cluster. I will give my cluster a name. I'll just call it first. Now it, asks, it is asking for the pull secret to be used to pull the images. So let us copy the pull secret, paste that here, and the installation configuration is generated. Let's look at the install config file. So the default install config that it generated shows that it's going to create three workers, three masters for the control plane, the network cider to use, and the IP address range for the services. The rest of the information includes pull secret and my SSH key and things like that. I made some minor changes to this install config to include a specific size for my worker nodes. I'm going to use M4 extra large. So as you can understand, we can make changes like this, which include the sizes of the machines, the network cider, the service network, and things like that. Now that we have edited the configuration, 
we'll use that configuration to install the cluster. So I'm running OpenShift install command to create a cluster pointing to that directory where this configuration exists. The cluster installation has just started and it will run for about 15 to 20 minutes and then, then the cluster will be ready. While the installer is installing the cluster, let's look at how the installation actually happens. The cluster installer, which is running on my workstation, creates a bootstrap node. This is the temporary node on the infrastructure where I'm installing the cluster. This bootstrap node sets up a small Kubernetes cluster, installs three master nodes. The master nodes form the control plane and once they are up and ready, they take over the control from the bootstrap node. The master node will have the complete machine configurations for the workers that are yet to come. So once the masters take over the cluster, then the workers would come up based on the configuration stored on the masters. In case of installer provision infrastructure, all the masters and the workers would use Red Hat Core OS as the operating system. Once the control plane on the master comes up, the bootstrap node will be destroyed. The cluster installation is now complete. As I explained just now, first it brought up the bootstrap node and once the control plane got set up, the bootstrap node was destroyed and then the workers came up. The installer also creates an admin user, the credentials to log into the cluster. We also have two different URLs. One is the URL to access the API server from OpenShift CLI. The other is the master URL to, the, to access the web console. In this video, we have learned to set up a new OpenShift 4.x cluster with minor customizations using installer provision infrastructure method. In the next video, we'll explore this cluster that we just created and look at the structure of the cluster and all the components that the installer created for us. Thank you.